Matthew chapter 10. Matthew presents Jesus as King of the Jews. And today we look at the disciples of the King. But before we do, and read verses 1 through 15, we want to go to our Heavenly Father in prayer. Father, encourage our hearts today. We pray that we might see the opportunities that lie before us as your children. To see how you've blessed us. To see your purposes for our life. To see the work that you've called us to do. Thank you for blessing us so. For giving us eternal life. For teaching us the things you want us to know. Lord, help us to understand that with light and knowledge comes responsibility. And Lord, that we shall give an account of how we've used what you have given us. And so Lord, we pray that you would cause us to be faithful today. May the Spirit of God bless our understanding and the knowledge of your will as we look into this passage about the disciples of the King. Teach us the things that we would know today. And Lord, give us your presence, we pray. And we thank you and praise you in the name of the King, our Lord Jesus. Amen. Chapter 10, verses 1 through 15. And when he had called unto him the twelve disciples, he gave unto them power against unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all manner of sicknesses and all manner of diseases. Now the names of the twelve apostles are these. First Simon, who is called Peter, and Andrew his brother, and James the son of Zebedee, and John his brother. Philip and Bartholomew, Tom, Thomas and Matthew the tax collector, James, the son of Alphaeus, and Labius, who is surnamed Thaddeus. Simon, the Canaanite, and Judas Iscariot, who also betrayed him. These twelve Jesus sent forth and commanded them, saying, Go not into the way of the Gentiles, and into any city of the Samaritans enter not, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel, as you go preaching, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. The king is offering the king to the Jews, and so now is not the time to go into all the world, but to give the message of the kingdom to the, the Jews. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out demons. Freely you have received freely give. Provide neither gold nor silver nor copper in your purses nor a bag for your journey nor two coats nor shoes nor a staff for the workman is worthy of his food. And into whatsoever city and town you enter inquire and it is worthy and there abide till you go from there. And when you come into the house greet it and if the house be worthy let your peace be upon it, and if it be not worthy, let your peace return unto you. And whosoever shall not receive you, nor hear your words, when you depart out of that house or city, shake off the dust of your feet. Verily I say unto you, it shall be more tolerable for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah in the day of judgment than for that city. Would you like to visit Palestine today? Take a two, three week trip to Israel and walk in the places of the Word of God, the places where Jesus walked, to see the tomb where perhaps He was buried, to see the place where He was crucified and died and paid for your sin, to see the shores of Galilee around which He ministered and did miracles and healings. Would you like to go to Palestine today? Have you ever thought I would 
like to have been one of the twelve, one of the twelve disciples to, to just be with Jesus for three years and reach out and touch the Son of God, to, to hear the things that He had to say with my physical ears, to go where He went to see the events of the things that happened in Scripture, would you have liked to have been one of the twelve? I could say to some of you today, would you like to go to Bible college? Would you like to be able to better learn what's in this book and what God has said to understand God's will and God's program and God's teaching? Maybe you would like five years off and just go to Bible college and be able to be trained and, and, and taught in the things of the Scripture. Would you like that today? Would you like to be a missionary today and go on a missionary journey to go to uh, maybe a different country and different lands to, to meet new people and talk with them, to tell them the message of the Word of God that Jesus saves and, and to work in their midst and see them saved and, and begin to grow as, as, as Christians? Would you, would you like that today? And here Jesus chose His twelve disciples and, and sent them out to proclaim the message of the kingdom. And He sent them out on a temporary journey and they returned again. And then later He, he sent out even a larger group of His disciples to do His work. But I can tell you today that, that really you can do all of the things that I've asked you would you want to if you're a real disciple of the Lord Jesus. You can have His presence every day of your life. You can talk to the Son of God in prayer and He can speak to you in your heart as you study Scripture. You can learn what He has for you in the Word of God and He can teach you through the Holy Spirit the things that He would have you to know. You can go and do His work and His bidding and see His life reach out from you and touch other people's lives. So much is available to those that would just be disciples of the King. And so I say to you today, here is something that God would have you to do. Here is something that will profit you and help others around you. Here is a... a uh, a duty, a, a responsibility, a privilege of the Christian law. And how can we be disciples of the King today? How can we see that work produced in our life? First of all, I think we can see it by telling the message of the King. And we see this in verses 16 through 23. This is what the disciples in 115 were sent to do. They were sent with a different message than we are in this church age. They were sent with a message that the king is here. And you can have the kingdom if you will. And the kingdom involves righteousness. And the kingdom involves the power of the Son of God to change the lives of people around him. And you can have the kingdom. And that was the message that he sent them out to proclaim and to illustrate. And He sends us out with a message of the cross that you can be saved for all eternity and you can have the King to live within your heart and live His life through you. And you can know the purposes and the blessing of the King today. And you can have fellowship with the King today. And so the message is different, but the requirement is the same. Disciples are to go and tell the message of the King. How quickly that is vanishing from our society today. There is so much pressure put on by unbelief that it's just not allowed anymore for on, uh, in your job. It's just not allowed anymore in a place of public uh, concourse to give out tracts even. Some places it's illegal. Businesses say no soliciting. And that's for tracts and Christians too, you see. But the responsibility is not changed. And the instruction that Jesus gave to here to these disciples has not changed. And so we look at 
how we can tell the message of the king today in verses 16 through 23. He mentions in 16 that we're to be wise and harmless. He said be wise as serpents and harmless as doves. We're to give thought and wisdom and let the Spirit of God direct us in the methods, in the way, in the manner in which we uh, deal with people that are lost. Not condemning them and saying, uh, giving them the impression that, that they are, are to be despised and judged by God, although that's true, we're all under the judgment of God, but showing them the love of Jesus that we are all guilty and all deserve hell, but Jesus has provided salvation for any that will. None of us are deserving, not that I'm better than you and therefore you need to be saved, but we are all lost and need Jesus and and what He's provided so wonderful and great to have the, the attitude of a dove, the love and personality of the Lord Jesus. And Jesus wasn't a wallflower that was afraid to speak the truth. You can't read the Gospels and, and think that Jesus was just a milk toast kind of a guy that went along with anything. But Jesus had love and compassion for people and He always tried to help them even when He had to speak stern rebuke for them. Is It was that they might turn from that and see the truth and be changed. And then He says, Beware of men in verse 17. If you carry the message, you're going to have trouble. And He talks about men will scourge you and and persecute you and you'll be brought before the judges and the trials and, and they're going to speak evil of you and, and, and they're going to uh, persecute you for telling the truth and, and a lot of times that's the case. Have you ever went door to door talking to someone, talking to people about Jesus? I used to do this and I can remember one day I said, hello, I, I'm Randall Pugh and I'm here to give you a gospel track, I think. And the man cursed and called me all kind of names and slammed the door in my face and said, get off of my property. And you're going to get that reaction in this life from people. And you can't be deterred by that. You can't be discouraged by that. You can't stop telling the message because some don't want to hear it. You can't stop telling the message because it may cost you something to do that. And when you tell the message, Jesus said the Spirit will help you to speak the words in verse 20 that you need to know. Uh, he said the Holy Spirit will guide you and give you the, the very testimony that God wants you to say. And then this matter of enduring that they, in verse 22, that endure to the end shall be saved. This thing of enduring. And he mentions the fact that that, that having a testimony may involve alienating some of your family, your, your friends, your close associates as you carry the message of Jesus. Enduring. Sometimes we see Christians, people get saved and for the first few years they're enthusiastic and energetic about telling people about Jesus and how wonderful He is. And then somehow all that goes away. Or you've seen people who have been saved and for 10 or 15 years seemingly were faithful and busy for Christ, but later in their life maybe dropped away and withdrew from that activity of carrying the message of the Lord Jesus Christ. Listen, there is no retirement from being a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ. There is no reason not to ever stop purposing to tell the message that God wants you to carry into this world to other people. And if you're going to be a disciple, you're going to have to deal with this thing of, of, of dispensing God's Word and especially dispensing this message to the lost about the wonderful cross work of Jesus and about what He wants to do in their lives. We need to tell the message of the King to be his disciples. We need to be willing to suffer the reproach of the king. And we've talked about some of those things of reproach in, in, in the latter part of the passage that we looked at. But in, in verses 24, uh, uh, 
through 35, Jesus specifically talks about this thing of, of testimony and reproach among his disciples. And the first thing he says is, if the Lord suffers, the disciples will suffer too. If men reacted to the testimony and message of Jesus like they did, with unbelief and rejection and anger and hatred so that they ended up taking this one who was God who did nothing but good and nailing him to a cross and mocking and ridiculing him as he died for them. If men treated the Lord that way, don't be surprised if they treat the servants that way too. And so the Lord says here, don't be surprised about that. Know that what they did to me, they're going to do to you. Don't be surprised by that. Don't be surprised by their ridicule and the evil and wrong things they say, like 25. If they have called the master of the house Beelzebub, they call Jesus the devil, then don't be surprised the names that they call you. And then fear not, and look in verse 26 and 28 and 31, the fear nots of bearing the reproach of Jesus. Fear not, therefore, there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed, nothing hidden that shall not be known. Whatever you experience and suffer and do, God knows about it. And if you're faithful in that, one day all the world will know about it too. Fear not. And then in 28, Fear not them who kill the body and are able to kill the soul, but rather fear him who is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. That is, don't, don't fear people who the worst thing they can do to you is take your physical life. Remember that there were some people in the temple and in some of the Pharisees that believed on Jesus but they were afraid to publicly identify with him because of what the, the system would do to them. Jesus said real disciples and real faith and real followers will never be ashamed of me. They'll not be ashamed of their Lord. They'll suffer like their Lord. They'll, they'll be faithful like their Lord. They won't quit because of their Lord. And then in verse 31, Fear not, therefore, you are more valued than many sparrows. The Father knows when the sparrow falls. He knows the number of hairs on your head. He knows all about you, and you're more valued than sparrows. And God is interested in all that you're doing for Him. And He keeps a record and account of that. And so our, our identification with Christ is to be there, and we're not to turn from that because of fear of what anybody can do to us. And then he deals with this matter of public profession. And he says in verse 32, that whosoever shall not confess me before men, if people see the truth and they see Christ, but they're afraid of what men will say and do, and they don't follow up on that faith by trusting in Jesus, and they're going to be lost. And Jesus said, Who, whoever won't identify with me on this earth, I won't identify with him before my Father in heaven. There is the matter of public profession. And how many people, though they know the truth, live the lifestyle of the world? This thing of peer pressure, it breaks my heart among people, and especially among the younger generation. Anybody from... 40 on down, how susceptible they are to want to fit in the mold of the crowd and the world. But Jesus said that for a disciple that we must suffer the reproach of the king. We must tell the message of the king. We must suffer the reproach of the king. We must love the king above all else. 36 through 42. And Jesus said, don't think that I've come to bring peace on the earth. Now he will in the millennial reign. And that promise at his birth 
peace on earth, goodwill to men is for then and not for now. But now he brings a sword. He brings division. And that's what he said. And he said that he would even cause decisions to be made in families and, and some would believe and some would not. And that would cause conflict in the family and set one variance against another. And then he says that he that loveth me, in verse 37, more than father is not worthy of me. Or daughter or son is not worthy of me. We're to love our children and we're to love our parents, but we're to love Jesus first and above all else. I think some children just uh, go to church and, uh, and are religious because their daddy and mom were Christians and they love their daddy and mom. Now we're to love our fathers and our mothers especially when they set good examples for us. But the motivation and the secret and the source of the Christian life is not a humanitarian thing. It is not a family. And, and Jesus said, you've got to love me more than you love any other person, more than your family. You've got to love me more than your own life also. And, and he says in verse 39, he that findeth his life for himself shall lose it, and he that loseth his life for my sake shall find it. And really the, the, the heart of all our rebellion against God is that we live our lives the way that we want to live them. But Jesus said you've got to love me more than you love your own life. And if you love him above all else, what will you get? What will you receive? You'll be rewarded with His life. You'll find His life. And then in 41 and 42, He says on Judgment Day, you're going to receive the rewards of your deed. The reward of a prophet. If you receive the prophet. Uh, giving drink in the name of Christ to a little one. You're going to receive reward for that. God always keeps up with things. And He's going to give reward to disciples for faithfulness. I say to you, do you want to be a disciple? Would you like to walk and talk with Jesus? Would you like to be taught by Him? Would you like to be able to do His will and see His life accomplish things through you and in you? You're to tell the message of the King. You're to suffer the reproach of the king. You're to love the king above all else. God, give us grace to be his disciples indeed. Amen.